I guess I'm gonna be alone from now on. Think again, kid. You're not alone. On December 19, 1957, in Sapporo, the capital of Japan's Hokkaido prefecture, Shuji Sato was born. When he was in elementary school, he was inspired by his older cousin, who would draw manga in their notebook. He spent his early childhood years in Tokyo in the Chiba prefecture, before returning to Hokkaido in junior high. He attended Hokkaido Kuchan High School, and after graduating in 1975, he moved back to Tokyo to try to find work. Two years later, in 1977, Space Battleship Yamato was released in theaters, and he started to visit a manga gallery in Ikoda, a small primarily residential area in Tokyo. This gallery had become a popular location for fans of anime and manga. One day while visiting, he saw a famous doujinshi entitled Parody Space Battleship Yamato. Side note, doujinshi, generally, refers to any self-published project in Japan that's trying to appeal to a specific audience. However, there are two categories that most of them fall under. Original works, or Ichichi Sozaku, and parody. Niji Sozaku. Original doujinshi, as you'd expect, are original creations made by amateur creators. And parody doujinshi are works that take existing worlds and characters and modify them. Shuji Sato was inspired by this project and decided to try his hand at writing parody manga. A few years later, he found out that Minori Shobo, a publishing company based in Tokyo, were looking for someone who could draw parody manga. He decided to take the chance and pitched an idea to the company. His idea was given the okay, and in the April 1980 edition of Minori Shobo's monthly out magazine, Shuji Sato made his publishing debut under the pen name Masami Yuki. The manga was called The Rival, and was a parody of Mobile Suit Gundam. However, only two of the four pages that he wrote, the first and the last, were actually printed. His first serialized manga would also be released in Monthly Out. In the December 1980 issue of the magazine, Noble Story debuted. It was a parody manga that fused elements from Voltus V and the Rose of Versailles, and it ran until the March 1981 issue of Monthly Out. In 1982, things started to change as his workload increased. He was writing more manga for Monthly Out and started writing for Animac Magazine, which was ran by Laporte, a retailer and mail order business that specialized in anime and games. Throughout these past two years, Masama Yuki was doing all of this on the side. He was an office worker and never had any intentions of being a mangaka full time. However, because of the extra work he was taking on as a mangaka, the quality of work in his day job suffered and he was given a warning by his employer. After that, he decided to retire from the company that he had been working at for the past six years and focus on manga. 1982 was also the year when Masami Yuki met Yutaka Izabuchi. The two of them became friends and would eventually form the animation group Headgear, which would go on to create Mobile Police Pat Labor. But that's a story for another time. Masami Yuki would continue writing manga and monthly out in various other magazines for the next couple of years, and in 1984, he would get a chance to write for Shogaku Khan's Weekly Shonen Sunday magazine. This came about because of a connection that Yutaka Izubuchi had with the editorial department. The next year, in 1985, Masami Yuki would release a new series in this magazine. This new series was called Tetsuan Birdie, known as Birdie the Mighty in English, and it debuted in the monthly Weekly Shonen Sunday special issue, Shonen Sunday Zokan. Side note, the word Tetsuan actually came from the pun Tetsuan Tsutomu. This pun combines Tetsuan Adam, or Astro Boy, with Tsutomu, the name of one of the series' main characters. The name Tetsuan Birdie was chosen because it makes it easy for readers to tell what kind of series it is just by reading the title. Masami Yuki came up with the idea for this manga in the early 80s, around the same time as one of his other works, A Simple Insert. He wanted to show that girls, who are often seen as just accessories for boys in shonen manga, could also play the starring role. However, despite his ambitions, things didn't go smoothly for his latest work. It ran from January to July before being placed on hold. Shogaku Khan wanted Birdie to run in the weekly magazines instead of the monthly special issue. The problem was that Masami already had a manga that was scheduled to be released in Weekly Shonen Sunday later that year, Ultimate Superhuman R or Kyukyoku Chojin R. Ultimate Superhuman R ran from August 7, 1985 to July 22, 1987, putting Birdie on a two-year hiatus. However, despite it not being his primary focus, Masama Yuki continued working on Birdie. He would release three one-shot chapters in the Weekly Shonen Sunday special issue while Ultimate Superhuman R was being published. Thousand Year Heartbeat in February 1986, Phantom Tide in September 1986, and All Green in February 1987. And now, with the conclusion of Ultimate Superhuman R, the story could properly continue. Tetsuan Birdie resumed monthly serialization in the special edition issue and ran from December 1987 to February 1988 before, ultimately, being cancelled entirely, leaving the story unfinished. Once again, Birdie was put on pause because of a new project, Mobile Police Pat Labor. Pat Labor and several other projects would keep Masami Yuki busy for the next several years, but while there wasn't going to be a new issue coming out every month, Tetsuan Birdie wasn't dead yet. In the 1990s, animation studio Madhouse wanted to train some of their younger members. 
In order to do this, they decided to allow Yoshiaki Kawajiri to pick a manga to base this OVA or original video animation on from a pool of candidates, since he was going to be the series' director. And as you may have guessed, the manga that he chose was Birdie. This presented an interesting challenge for the young team, how to finish this unfinished story within the four episodes that they were given. In order to help them out, Yutaka Izubuchi was brought in as a supervisor. The creation of the OVA also benefited readers of the original manga. In order to celebrate the OVA's release, Masami Yuki created another extra chapter, King of the Labyrinth. It picked up where All Green left off, and was released in the July 1996 edition of Weekly Shonen Sunday Super. Side note, Weekly Shonen Sunday Super is the same monthly magazine that Birdie was always published in, the Weekly Shonen Sunday special issue. It was just renamed in 1995. The OVA also motivated Shugaku Khan to release the complete series for the first time. That same year, all 10 volumes of the original manga were published under the Shonen Sunday Books label, but the extra chapters weren't included. The OVA was released in four volumes directly to VHS from July 25, 1996 to February 25, 1997. It was re-released on DVD in 2001. In North America, the OVA was licensed and dubbed by Central Park Media. They released the series in two sets, with each containing two episodes. The two VHS sets were released in 1999, and the series was released in two DVD sets in 2004. But home video releases aside, after it finished airing, the series would go silent again, and fans wouldn't hear anything until the new millennium. The closest thing that Birdie fans had to new material came in 2001, when Masami Yuki released Black Magic Knight in Shogaku Khan's newest magazine, Monthly Sunday GX, and it appeared in the January and February issues. But it was a spin-off, and was almost completely disconnected from the rest of the series. Masami Yuki's career took an unexpected turn in 2002, one of his newest projects, Daughter of Pangea Kuni which had been running in Weekly Shonen Sunday since 2001, was discontinued after only 5 volumes. Because he didn't have anything running in Weekly Shonen Sunday, he was moved to Weekly Young Sunday. After he was moved there, the editor of Jaja Uma Grooming Up, another one of Masami Yuki's works published in Weekly Shonen Sunday, suggested that he start writing Birdie in this magazine, and he decided to reboot the series. But why did he decide to reboot the series instead of just continuing from where it left off? Firstly, the pace of the manga would have to be adjusted to fit this new release format. The original series was released in a monthly magazine, but this would be coming out every week. Secondly, a lot of things in the world have changed since the original series was released. While it would retain a lot of the original series' location and stories, there would be some changes made to the formula. The series would adopt a more modern look and incorporate modern conveniences like cell phones and the internet that weren't present in the original series. Masami Yuki described his thought process in rebooting the series in a blog post. At long last, or rather, what can I say? I'll be working on Tetsu on Birdie. I've been thinking about when and how to do it for more than 10 years, but I thought it was time to start drawing it. So I decided to start the serialization. Start serialization? Not restart? If you thought so, you are a longtime fan. Thank you very much. This birdie is not a continuation of the previous story, but a completely new story starting from the first episode. The character design has also been slightly renewed. I was torn about what to do here. On one hand, I feel sorry for the readers who are still looking forward to the continuation of the previous story after such a long time. But on the other hand, it is somewhat old-fashioned in both pictorial and narrative manners, and the author's way of thinking has also changed a little. There was a gap of more than 15 years between the two works, and I felt that it would be impossible to connect the two straight to the present day. At one point, the idea of starting the serialization from the beginning and making time to rewrite the entire first volume in its current style, without changing the panel layout, etc., and replacing it, came to mind. However, since the magazine was going to change, I decided that it would be better for the younger readers to start from scratch. So, for the time being, the story will continue to progress much the same as the old one, only the details will change. So there will probably be many readers who say the old one was better. For those people, I apologize. I will try to make this story as speedy and tense as possible while keeping the carefree mood of the old one, so please bear with me for a while. Some of you may be thinking, why Birdie after all that? I can only say because I want to draw it. I like this kind of story no matter what. As for the author's own response, I'm enjoying making this story so far, and I have a feeling that it will be interesting. No, I will make it interesting. But I don't want it to be censored again, self-bombing. So please bear with me for a while. The reboot would debut in Weekly Young Sunday on December 26, 2002, and would run in the magazine until July 31, 2008, when the magazine was shut down. Fortunately for fans, the story would be allowed to finish, and Birdie was moved to Shogaku Khan's Weekly Big Comic Spirits magazine. It would run there from September 6 through September 22, 2008. And while the rebooted manga's run in its old magazine had come to an end, something else was just beginning. Plans for a new anime based on Birdie the Muddy were announced by Weekly Young Sunday in 2006. This adaptation would be based on the reboot, but unlike the previous adaptation, it wouldn't be trying to recreate the manga. While some of the core elements would remain the same, 
there would be significant differences between the anime and manga, so much so that it's basically a completely different story. There are two primary reasons why they decided to go in this direction. First, if they tried to do a one-to-one -one adaptation, they didn't think that they'd be able to satisfy Masami Yuki. Second, since the manga wasn't finished, they would have to change the story anyway once they ran out of source material. Because of this, the staff at A1 Pictures would write the story and get suggestions from Masami Yuki. They also created the series' initial character designs that would be finalized by Ryo Timo, the anime's character designer and chief animation director, and the series was directed by Kazuki Akane. The original name for the project was Tetsuan Birdie the Movement or Birdie the Movement, but its official title was revealed on March 22, 2008 as Birdie the Mighty Decode. The first season aired from July 4, 2008 to September 26, 2008 and contained 13 episodes. The series' second season was announced midway through the first, in August of 2008, and would air in January 2009. The second season, Birdie the Mighty Decode 2, aired from January 9, 2009 to March 27, 2009, and contained 12 episodes. Also, while the second season was airing, Birdie made its light novel debut. On February 18, 2009, that's when Birdie Decode Anahino Sayaka E was released. It was an adaptation of the anime's first season, and it was written by Mia Asakawa. You also may have noticed something interesting about the two seasons. One of them has more episodes than the other. This extra episode was actually produced, but it didn't air with the rest of them. In March of 2009, it was announced that this episode, Birdie the Mighty Decode Decipher, would be released on DVD in Japan on July 22nd, and it would take place in between the two seasons. In North America, Funimation announced that it had acquired the rights to Birdie the Mighty Decode from Aniplex on November 22nd, 2009. The first DVD set was scheduled to be released on October 26, 2010, but things didn't quite go as planned. Just before the release date, on October 20th, Funimation issued a recall for all of the sets. They explained why in a statement released the next day. After its manufacture, we discovered a problem specific to Disc 2 of the Birdie the Mighty Decode Part 1 release scheduled for October 26th. This is a replication error in which the wrong video was encoded on Disc 2. We have rescheduled its release for November 30th, coinciding with the release of Birdie the Mighty Decode Part 2. If customers have already received this title, they should contact the retailer from where they made the purchase to return the product and make arrangements for receiving Birdie the Mighty Decode Part 1 when it is reissued. We apologize for the inconvenience. As Funimation said in their previous statement, both parts of Birdie the Mighty Decode were released on November 30th, 2010. But this was far from the final release. The next year, on December 6, 2011, Funimation released the complete series on DVD. They followed that up two years later on June 4th, 2013, by releasing the series again as one of their Save or Super Amazing Value Edition releases. Unfortunately for fans of the series, Funimation's rights expired in 2016, and Birdie the Mighty Decode is now out of print. Now that we've covered the anime, let's rewind a bit. Masami Yuki didn't stop writing Birdie after his move to Big Comic Spirits. Birdie the Mighty Evolution began publication in the magazine shortly after the reboot ended, starting on October 11, 2008, and ending on July 23, 2012. In October of that same year, Masami Yuki finally got to end the series on his own terms. In that month's issue of Monthly Spirits, he released Birdie the Mighty Evolution epilogue and brought the series to a close. The story of Birdie the Mighty is filled with twists, turns, starts, and stops. And, fortunately, unlike many other series, the final stop was one of the author's own making.